Hey, Miyagi here, and I am the lead sound design trainer with Vespers.ca. Today I'm going to walk you through a wicked little trick with Live Sampler that I use all the time to turn Sampler into a sort of granular style playback device, which is great for soundscapes and pads. The sound goes like this. So this is a technique that I go into much greater depth on in the Synthesis and Sound Design Masterclass, along with plenty of others to help you get the most out of your instruments. Be sure and check out more on the course and grab this instrument rack in the links below. So there's some cool post-processing going on in this case using filters and effects, but we're just going to have a look at Sampler. Live Sampler is a great device and has the ability to do a ton of stuff, especially if you know some tricks and workarounds, and we're going to look at one of those. So, to be clear, this is not granular synthesis proper, but a great approximation of the types of effects that you can get with a good granular synth, and is a very easy trick to set up. To start with, let's have a listen to our raw sound, which I've created in Massive and flattened out to audio. We're going to take this nice morphing wavetable sound and bounce it into Sampler by slicing it to MIDI. The more complex the sound, the nicer the result. So try filter rises and sweeps with this technique, as well as wavetable outputs and even human voices. They can all yield really cool results. The original sound has C as a root note, so when it gets into sampler, it will be chromatically accurate. I'm going to set it to create one slice per warp marker, as I haven't added any warp markers, so the whole sound will end up on one slice. I'll quickly extend the range too, so it's playable up and down the keyboard. Now we're going to have a look at the sample tab and start setting up a loop. We're going to set the sustain mode to forward looping and then link it to sample start. We're also going to set the sample start forward a little bit, just about 50 samples or so. That way we have something to crossfade. Nice glitchy ambient sounds like this benefit from very short repetitions. So we're going to be after a very, very short loop, probably shorter than you'd ever really use in sampler most of the time. That said, too short and the loop itself will start to alter the pitch of the sound because of its duration. So we don't want to go too short. A thousand samples or so is good. Let's have a quick listen. So what we want to be able to do is morph the point of the loop within the sample using a macro knob. I'm just going to quickly turn sampler into an instrument rack so we have access to one. When we right click on sample start though, we don't see an option to do so. Sampler doesn't allow you to do this directly, but that doesn't mean that you can't. The fun comes in when we hit up the modulation tab. Now, when we activate the auxiliary envelope, we can see that one of its destinations is loop start. So let's select that and set it to 100. Now let's adjust the envelope setting so there's no peak, no release, and really all we're using is the sustain, so I'll get rid of decay as well. Now let's right click on sustain. It is mappable to a macro. This means that the envelope's output will control the sample position, but statically. Wherever we set the sustain level to is where the sample will play back. And as we move the macro knob, we can hear it morphing through the sample. So now let's just hop back into our instrument rack here, and we're going to double up this instance of sampler and throw a pitch plugin in front of one of them and put it up an octave. We can get a much thicker sound that way. Now that we've done this, let's also shorten one of the sample's endpoints in one of the samplers, which means that the macro set to control the sample position will have slightly less of an overall range to work with, and that will differ the tone coming from the two samplers even further. So, by adding some effects, including some drive, reverb, phaser, flanger, delays, and some other things, we can come up with a beautiful overall sound. This is a quick little ninja trick, and is one of the ways in which I'll show you how to creatively use your instruments to their full potential. Be sure and grab this rack, and check out more info on the Synthesis and Sound Design Masterclass in the links below.